Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of uh, Homework Helper. So I'm going to try to help you with some problems your teacher may give you on, uh, in this case, gene expression. So this is a, a basic introduction of gene expression, uh, which is useful for introductory biology all the way up to AP biology. So in this uh, screencast, we'll cover uh, the process of transcription and we'll cover the process of translation and how DNA is used to go to uh, a protein through this process. So for this, you'll need a genetic code table. Your teachers probably provided you one with one and um, take that out now. Otherwise, uh, open your textbook. Your, your book will have the genetic code table because we'll need that for down the line in uh, translation. So let's start with transcription. So this is an example of transcription. And of course, with transcription, we're talking about going from DNA to RNA, okay? So the big uh, idea here is that as you're transitioning from DNA, which has T's in it, which has thymine in it, um, you're going to transition into RNA language to the process of transcription in which there are no T's. Instead, U's are substituted. So take, take uh, this example here. Um, so G would complementary base pair with C, A would complementary uh, base pair with U, and T would complementary base pair with A. So for the DNA sequence GAT, you would get an RNA sequence of C, U, A, again because um, of complementary base pairing in this step. So I, I kind of look at this, I teach my students uh, this uh, as being a one step forward. So uh, you can see that we've only gone, gone one step forward in the process of gene expression. So we've gone from DNA to RNA. And it can get more complex. So you can see here in this second example of transcription, uh, we're going to take more DNA bases and transcribe them into RNA using complementary base pairing and substituting uh, U's instead of T's. So there's going to t you're going to see your cell here in your RNA molecule. So again, uh, if we're looking here, T is going to pair with A, A is going to pair with U, C is going to pair with G, C with G, C with G, A is once again going to go with U, T with A, G with C, and A with U. So your RNA transcript here in red would be AUG, GGU, ACU. So again, we're taking only one step forward. We're doing uh, transcription in this example. Okay. I like to have my students be able to go backwards. So although uh, working backwards is sort of associated with retroviruses, uh, retroviruses bringing RNA in, and making DNA from that RNA. Um, I think it's a useful step here to really see that students understand what transcription is. So what I have here is an RNA transcript and students should be able to take one step back. So for those of you uh, learning gene expression for the first time, show us that you understand the DNA source that created this RNA. Okay, so we're gonna go backwards here. So for uh, a C, in RNA, that would have been a G in DNA. For a G in RNA, that would have been a C in DNA, okay? For an A in RNA, that would have been a T, and for an A again, T. When you get to the U's, stop and think what you would have, uh, what would have created that U, and it is in fact an A, okay? So, um, you should be able to cruise through the rest of this molecule and see that uh, the rest of this code is that, okay? So our one step backward would give us this DNA sequence. And what you can do is if you cover over the RNA trans, uh, transcript here, you should be able to get this again if you cover it up and just transcribe, 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 transcribe. Okay, so that's one step backwards. Now we're moving on to translation. So uh, there are two parts to gene expression, transcription and translation. 
Now we're going to take our, our RNA transcript and we're going to uh, show what amino acids would be coded for in your polypeptide, so in your growing protein uh, at the ribosome as translation is occurring. Okay, so this is where you'll need your genetic code table, so take that out. And if you look at your genetic code table and you find, well, there, there are two genetic code tables. There are the uh, rectangular ones and the, and the, and the circle ones. Um, but if you look here in this RNA transcript, we're going to break this down into codon number one. Okay, so find the first base in that co codon as a U, then find the second one as a C, and the third one as an A. Okay, so if you're looking at that, you'll see that U, C, A codes for serine. And there are a couple of ways to, it's actually more than a couple, there's three ways to note serine. You could just write out the amino acid. You can give a three-letter abbreviation, in this case, S-E-R, or give the single letter abbreviation. So let's try that again for the second codon here. And use your genetic code table to tell me when the first base is A, when the second base is C, and when the third base is G, what you get. So take a look at that genetic code table. Pause this if you have to. Uh, but you'll see that for A, C, G, the amino acid is threonine. Okay, your teachers will probably want you to, to put the abbreviations for it because that threonine takes up a lot of space. So the three letter abbreviation is THR and the single letter abbreviation is T and that's actually what I prefer. Um, so for my students listening along, I do prefer that single letter abbreviation. Okay, use your genetic code table again. What does AAU give you? And you'll see that that is N for asparagine. What does C in the first position, C in the second position, and G in the third position give you? If you look at your genetic code table, you see that that's a proline. So we have here one, two, three, four amino acids encoding uh, from this RNA transcript right here. So keep in mind, this is translation. Let's do that again. Um, understanding that, again, we've taken one step forward. We've gone from RNA to amino acid in the process of translation. Let's see if we can do that backwards. This is a little more complicated, but again, being able to go backwards will show us that you understand translation and how to use that genetic code table. So looking at your genetic code table, you should quickly note that there are two positions on that genetic code table where you can find serine as the amino acid. Okay, so long story short, there are six different ways to do this problem. Okay, I will pick one to show you, but understand that because there are six codons for serine, you could do this a couple of ways. So I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, for serine, I'm going to pick the codon UCC. Okay, so UCC, uh, if you look at the genetic code table and you're going one step back to create that UCC, uh, UCC codes for serine. Okay, but again, you could put UC anything and it would code for serine if you're looking at your genetic code table. You could also put A. G, C, or A, A, G, U, and also get a serine, okay? So this represents four ways. This is one, and this is one. So you, there are six different ways to get serine as an amino acid. Okay, six different codons. Tryptophan's a fun one because there's only one way to get tryptophan. So if you see the RNA codon, UGG, that's going to give you a tryptophan, okay? So if you see a W in your sequence, if you take one step back, the codon that gave you that tryptophan is UGG, okay? So now we're going to make it a little more complicated. We're going to put it all together 
and look at gene expression from a DNA sequence all the way down to the amino acid se uh, sequence, okay? So we're looking at this. This is two steps forward, okay? So again, you're taking your DNA sequence and you're just transcribing it, okay? So what I'm saying here is that a will give you, T will give you an A, U, a, a will give you a U, okay? And some people sort of go through the code and they say, well, A is the complicated one, so I don't want to put any T, so anywhere I see a U, an A, I'm going to put a U, okay? A, U, 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 U. If you're afraid of making that mistake, go ahead and do that. But you should be able to go and, uh, you know, add your code. Uh, letter per letter. So C will give us a G, G will give us a C, G will give us a C, C will give us G, C will give us a G, T will give us an A, T will give us an A, T will give us an A, C will give us a G, and T will give us an A. Okay? So we've done our first step. We've done transcription. Now we want to do translation. We want to go from RNA to amino acid. So let's translate this. First thing we want to do is put our RNA transcript into convenient three-letter codons. I like to put the brackets on them because it reduces confusion. It only takes one misstep, one mis mistaken letter to go wrong. So if you look at your genetic code table, AUG is going to give you a methionine. Your teacher probably mentioned AUG as the starting or start codon, which is to say that all of your polypeptides, all your proteins should begin with M. Okay, look at your genetic code table and tell me what UUC codes for. Looks to me like that codes for F. So that codes for phenylalanine. Um, if it's taking you a few extra steps to do this, just pause it and think about it, okay? We're going to move on. Next codon will give you R for arginine. GUA will give you V for valine. AAU will give you asparagine, N. And UGA is a special one. Your teacher hopefully mentioned this to you as well. This is a stop codon, one of three. So UGA is a stop codon, so you do not put an amino acid there, what you do is you just stop. So I've got this special little list over here. If you count the codons, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are a total of six codons here, but the last one is a stop codon that does not add an amino acid to your growing polypeptide. So if you look at that, six minus one will give you five amino acids. Let's count them out. There's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so keep that in mind. The stop codon does not code for an amino acid. Okay, so this is the two steps forward approach. Increasing complexity going all the way from DNA to amino acid. We've taken one step there with transcription. We've taken a second step with translation. Let's see if we can take two steps backwards. Okay, so I'm going to give you a four amino acid polypeptide. Here's one, two, three, four, create an RNA transcript that would code for that, and then take it even one step further back and reverse transcribe into the DNA that would have given you that RNA transcript through translation, okay? If you want to check your work, you can start with that DNA sequence and make sure it gives you the same amino acid sequence at the end, okay? So let's do this together. Uh, according to my table, the one way that you can get methionine, or M, is A-U-G. So that first codon has to be A-U-G. Another thing for num uh, amino acid number two, that's tryptophan. Tryptophan is always U-G-G. -G. So there's your RNA codon for tryptophan. Now we get a little tricky. Lysin lysine can be... Uh, arrived at two different ways through translation. I'm going to go the easy route according to my genetic code table and say AAA. So an RNA transcript of AAA, this RNA codon, would give me lysine. I'm 
going to also go the easy route for F, for phenylalanine, which there are two ways to get. I'm going to go U, U, U. I encourage you to do the same. It's easier that way. Okay, so we have uh, four codons that would give us these amino acids. Let's take one more step back and reverse transcribe. So if I have an A here in the first position of my first codon, that means that I must have had a T in the DNA. For a U, that means I must have had an A. For a G, must have had a C. And if I go through and complete this entire sequence, my DNA sequence that ultimately gives me these four amino acids would read TAC, ACC, TTT, AAA. So if you want, just cover this portion up and do gene expression, meaning transcribe from DNA to RNA, translate from RNA to amino acid, and make sure you can get the same sequence of amino acids. Okay? So we've taken two steps backwards in this approach going from amino acid to RNA, from RNA to DNA, now take two steps forward and do gene expression to see if you get at that same sequence. Okay, now in this case, because we don't have a stop codon, uh, our codons and amino acids are gonna match up. We have one, two, three, four codons, and one, two, three, four amino acids. Okay, so I hope that helps. It's basic gene expression. Uh, check back for videos that you know show, the, show other aspects of gene expression, uh, and I hope this really helped you.